So before we started recording today, I wanted to try driving around and I learned why I can't drive too far. It looks like the rover actually has like a range, which I wonder what happens if we push it out of its max. Is it just going to reset us or do we just lose comms? It we it's weird that I'm losing the visual. Oh, it, it literally respawns me. Interesting. It's weird that I lose the visual because I'm in the car. So I'm guessing I'm only I'm not seeing via the windshield at the front. I wonder if that sadly is like everything we do with the rover. I hope not because I really enjoy driving it. But it is possible like it's completely done and everything else from here on out is the train system. As as sad as that sounds. Oops. Let's go up here. Let's find out. How do we even take the train? Do we just hop on? No? Maybe I should check my actual objective. Reset the power in the moon hub. Oh, so I actually have to go into the moon hub. Oh no. It's been a couple days since I played the game, so my button... My button awareness is at an all-time low. Okay. Let's see here, to the moon hub. That would be the, the computer right here, right? No, this one. This is what I said about my button awareness. Now I'm just T-posing on the desk. I'll get it, give me a second. So we're back online then? Not established for the MPT network. No incoming signal. Diagnose MBT, monorail. The monorail is still offline to the Tomball reactor. Okay, the monorail looks like it's back online. Interesting. I was curious about that. Because the monorail seemed like the next logical conclusion as to what we're doing. But also, it looks like there's a couple of um, holograms directly in front of me that maybe we should go check out. Is it just the one? Oh, that's a lot of people. Okay. Today. Cool thing is you can toggle and Today walk around. We find ourselves at a the catastrophic events that have unfolded at the Tumble facility have opened our eyes to a truth that cannot be denied. We have lost friends, colleagues. Our fellow colonists gave their life for a hopeless cause, for a dying planet that we can never sustain. We used to call it home. Our pale blue dirt. But the Earth we know today is a wither process, a shadow. Former self, the MBT changed us to a barren rock. But no more. All of you gathered here are survivors. You're here because you're mankind's strongest, the smartest, the brightest. Together, we will dare to live and risk greatness, start a new age of discovery. Like our ancestors, that fateful moment, they first set out to explore new worlds. We can turn back and confine ourselves to a dying planet. Or we can look outward. Now is the time to act. Make your decision and make it now. A new beginning dawns for humanity. And it dawns today. So, like, what if they chose... What if they just chose not to come? Like, that's not a choice. There's not a choice there. It's, make your decision now. And if you choose not to come, you just get left alone here to die. That's not a, that's not a choice. That's a, hey, this is a directive that I am giving you. If you don't follow, you die. That's what that is. In 2048, six years before the blackout, the experimental cryosleep generator malfunctioned inside the Hugens research facility. 
Only three people survived, Maria Gonzalez, Dr. Rosa Laverde, and Edgar Davis. For their bravery in the face of disaster, they were awarded a symbolic coin, of which one seems to be missing. Wait. Oh! But that was back on Earth, actually, right? Yeah, this was back on Earth. That was, um, I guess Maria Gonzalez's. Wait, was she here? Not during this. She couldn't have been here during this. She would have had to been... After the incident, she would have had to go on to Earth. And then this happened while she was away. I feel like that's how that puzzle fits together. And then let's go to the monorail station. I think that's where we go next. This crew quarters be here in the vehicle bay. And I think are both sides working or just it looks like just the right because this still has like a a more reddish hue to it, which typically means it's not working in games. We could check, but it just looks like it's not lit up. See where this is lit up over there. It's not lit up. OK. There's another thing to watch, too. What was that speech all about? MacArthur can't decide this on his own now, can he? Look, we don't call the shots here, OK? Now help me out with this stuff. Put that down, Frank. Don't you know what helium is for? Don't you think it's strange it's here instead of next to the reactor? It's supposed to power. Of course I do. It's just... A... Just what? Should we accept everything they say? Do you even realize what the consequences are if we leave while the MPT is offline? What choice do we have? What do we really have to go back to? Floods, dust storms, blazing heat? I'm done. The council's giving us a second chance and I'm not wasting it. Now I'm done talking. Just give me a hand. Give... Um, Outpost crew member didn't get a name. Frank got a name, but Outpost crew member didn't. And Outpost crew member seemed... I don't know, the more logical in this situation. They both know what's happening, though. It's not like one's not logical. They're both pretty logical in what's going on. It's just one is more complacent. One is more complacent, and, like, the way he was wording it, it's giving me a second chance. I don't know. It's just a little weird. Oh, I thought I could use that. Okay, well, I guess not. Let's turn my flashlight on. It's a little dark in here. Do I just use the one at the front? Whoa, do I drive this thing too? Or is this just me sitting down? Looks like there's an audio recording. They did close the doors of this thing, right? I'm not gonna get open to a, like a vacuum of space, am I? This is Sarah Baker, lead engineer at Pearson Space Station. I was sent to investigate the blackout together with station mechanic Rolf Robertson. I was attacked by an AZ unit and lost consciousness. The reasons for this attack remain unclear. It seems my expedition partner has left. And I am unable to contact Pearson Space Station or any of the other facilities. I'm going to cross the frontier now, passing Copernicus Outpost 1, to get to Tombo and try to figure out what caused the MPT failure. Whoever finds this, please try to contact me. Alex, end recording. So there's a chance she's still alive. Um, but granted, a very minimal chance. But a chance nonetheless, because I thought she died with the ASE unit. Looks like she managed to get away. Maybe that was what the whole chair was. Maybe the chair she threw to get out. All right, so we need to gain access to the monorail terminal. Wait, investigate why the monorail stopped. What? Did it just stop in like one of the outposts? It didn't make it all the way through. No, oh, there's a passcode. Is this some sort of safety measure? That's a lot of footsteps. That's a lot of footsteps. Heading to the monorail, but not on this side. On this side, it's like, um, it's just dirt. 
but no real footsteps. And there was a cracked one of the, I guess, helium threes. That's a really creepy noise. I don't like that. Authorized personnel only. What is this creepy noise? Is that downstairs? Is there something to watch? Space tech helium on the moon, essential to humanity's survival on Earth. Portrait of a pioneer, science and sacrifice. In this summer edition, we sit down with pioneering architect and Lunar Council member Dr. Isaac Johansson to highlight the many obstacles and triumphs of developing the MPT. I am the number one anti-Isaac Johansson fan. When I was editing, I realized what I was trying to say. It is the fact that he does not stand on his own ground. Like, his morals just seem to be wish-washy. Whereas, like, at least with the, like, main bad guy, MacArthur, he is, he is like a devoted villain in this situation. He truly believes in the stupidness he's spewing. All Copernicus One colonists, this is an evacuation. The reactor at Tombo has suffered a critical malfunction. We're here to evacuate you to Copernicus Moon Hub. Whoa, calm down. Who sent you? We're here on official orders of the Lunar Council. The Lunar Council? Frank! Do you see anything strange happening across the MPT network? Mm, I've got nothing out of the ordinary. Tombo seems fine to me. Perhaps you could explain a bit more first. This is for your own safety. The situation will be explained by the Council when all colonists arrive at Moon Hub. So, MacArthur calls the shots now, huh? Oh, we don't have time for this. Just take them. What? Just Get take them? Evacuation crew to MacArthur. We're progressing to stage two. Outpost crew and the package are on their way to Moon Hub. We didn't receive any word from the others at Reinhold, though. Good work, Evac. Frank ran. Contact me again when the second evacuation crew arrives. Over and out. This is just a, like... The de-escalation did not happen at all. Everything was just super escalated. During this, like, event. And it's weird because, like... One day, seemingly, everyone's just hunky-dory normal, and the next... What's this post-it? What is this post-it note? Anyways, the next, like, craziness is happening. I feel like I've gone full Sherlock Holmes, though, at this point. This is Pearson Station Engineer Sarah Baker again. I traveled to this outpost from Moonhub, where I was sent to investigate the blackout together with my expedition partner. Moonhub was completely deserted when we arrived, and we were unable to bring the MPT back online. We got separated and lost contact. I'm traveling towards Tombow alone to continue my investigation. The only lead I have is that something has happened at the reactor facility. The entrance to the monorail station here is blocked, so I'll have to find another way to cross the landscape. It's worth a shot. The entrance to the monorail station's blocked. Like, the actual, like, train can't move through, so you have to use, like, a... Huh. D am I missing anything else here? This is... Okay, that we just listened to. Trinity. Debate the moral implications of their action when she joins them. Okay, we listened to that. Her attempt backfires as Isaac illustrates the futility of maintaining the MPT's energy to flow to Earth. Triumphant MacArthur leads them onward. I do not like this guy. I don't like Isaac Johansson the most. Uh, in a speech held before lunar colonists, William MacArthur pays his respects to casualties of the recent unreported catastrophe at the facility, denounces unrealistic expectancies of the WSA, and offers an alternate route to a prosperous future for humanity, Outward recorded just during the blackout, like at the blackout. Dude, he is responsible. This tragedy that claimed casualties, he probably did himself. And on purpose. Because we've already had, like, in the past him say, what is, what is, like, a leap in discovery if sacrifices aren't needed? Shortly after MacArthur's speech, lunar colonists make final preps to carry out MacArthur's outward plans. Not all agree that it is the right course of action. But while some protest out of concern over Earth's fates, others perceive wisdom 
in MacArthur's words, recorded 23rd of September, two hours after the blackout. So here's something that's interesting. Hey, let me look at abandonment. A task force dispatched by MacArthur forces the outpost crew to come with them to the moon hub where MacArthur is gathering all lunar colonists in preparation for outward. After sending the crew an important package off to moon hub, the task force is commanded to remain at the outpost until a second task force arrives. We're like discovering things backwards. Frank has been mentioned twice though so far. Can I jump that? And the first time he seemed very complacent. <laughs> oh, I'm so stupid. Anyways, the first time he seemed super complacent. This time, it seemed like he ran. Like he was in the doorway, right? That was Frank. Unless it's a different Frank. But it seemed like he ran from this unit. But this was also six hours before the speech. So maybe like he actually really got reinvigorated or maybe he was just scared after the speech. I don't know. I have no idea. What is this? Man, this colony is just completely gone. I'm thinking we might actually run into Thera by chance. There's a tire. Maintenance manual. Are we going to make our own rover? Changing tires, attaching and detaching your ASC, exchanging batteries, and fault finding with more. We might be making our own car. Which is funny that I started off the episode going, man, I really wish I could take the car more places. Was forced to take the monorail, and I'm back to now creating a new car? Interesting. Broken tire. Although she was trained to be a software engineer rather than a hardware mechanic, Sarah has found another way across the landscape after changing an abandoned lunar rover. Broken tire. However, given the rover's limited range, it's unclear how one could take her to the Tombaugh facility. Oh, she might not have made it. That's sad. I just got the hope that maybe she didn't make it. So what can I do here? I have a passcode that I need, but I haven't found any sort of any sort of sign that's like, oh, this is the passcode. I think there was a locked door and on top of the locked door, there was the passcode at the very beginning. So we need to work towards finding whatever that secret is. Also, what is this man's name? Is it Frank Wilson? Okay. Frank Wilson. Let's go upstairs again. I'm going to look around for this for a bit. So yeah, see, there's a passcode here, too. Did I miss it somewhere? I might have missed it somewhere. I probably missed it on the bottom, to be honest. Because game logic would say you go all the way down. That way you don't miss anything before moving on. Oh, uh, yeah, I missed it. It was right here. I didn't even see that. I was I was going into the ASC unit to see if if I could go up to that thing. And learned I couldn't. And then I found this little like elevator shaft deal, which I'm still not able to cut from this distance, it seems. So I wonder, can I cut from the ASC unit? I don't think so. How do I cut this? It's really not giving me that option here. Unless I'm crazy. Oh! Um, can I lift these things? By chance? There's a ladder. That'll work. It won't let me grab it, though. I couldn't grab it on the back for some reason, so I had to grab it on the front or the side. I don't even know how close we're going to be able to get to this thing. I guess I could probably go in like right here. No, even then it's not really giving me much. Eh, maybe this is close enough. Yeah, that was close enough. I do not know how people play shooters on a controller because even aiming that little thing right there is so difficult for me. 
Um, okay, well, let's look at the pipe from the outside. Left goes back there and up to that thing. Right. I don't think right goes anywhere. Maybe down? I think I'm supposed to go left, but I'm going to explore right real quick. Oh, that was the quickest ex exploration of my life. There's literally a wall like two feet in. So this isn't like a maze, like it's a very linear air tunnel here. Oh, that's what that is. Which means I know a place I need to take the ASE unit. What am I doing? Back on the main ship, there's a place where I could take the ASE unit. Oh, I don't like this. I don't like it. And now it's a maze. No, it's not. It's never a maze. It's amazing how much it's not a maze. 1881. I can't collect that. Um, can I open this? Does that open the door at all? No. Where does this take me? Where did this take me? Was I not able just to do that earlier? Did I not know? I was here earlier. Have I always been able just to go through this thing? Or did I have to power it first? I had to power it first. Okay, so 1881 seems to be the code. And then it looks like there's something going down over here. Wait. No, that, you have to go through here first. I'm a little disoriented. So keep going through here. Wait, this just goes back to where I was. Okay, so I could stop control. And then I could maybe call my guy back. Or maybe he's stuck in the pipes forever. I don't know. Let's go find out. I wonder if... <laughs> I might have the ASC stuck in the pipes. I wonder if there's a way for me to... To, like, call it back. I think it is on... This thing? See how the, the whistle on the right? I don't know. Oh, God! Hello. Jesus. Yeah, you can call it back. It just creeps up behind you. Very quietly. Terrifying, even. Uh, it was 1881. And even if it was backwards, it's the same password. Alright, Frank. What can we learn from you? Hi, Edgar. Everything alright over at Reinhold? You asked me to let you know when MacArthur and Johansson would travel down to Tumba again. They just passed the station and should be at Tumba soon. Hope this helps with whatever it is you're trying to do. Frank. Frank, that's good. Very good. There's a pattern and I'm close to bringing it to light. I just need some final answers. Thanks, Edgar. Okay, Edgar. Good luck. Frank, it's happening. I knew it. Three monorail trains left Tomba. One's headed to Hugens, the other two are going for Moonhub. The first Moonhub train should arrive at your station soon enough, but the second won't until I get answers. This is the key, Frank. The key to understanding what the council's been planning for so long, and I'm close. That's on September 22nd, 2054. Maybe when he ran in, maybe he was locking the door? Or potentially maybe he was um, sending another message. Maybe Frank's kind of a sleeper agent here. Like, he seemed complacent, but it was all just like a show, if you will. I think that's a pretty good possibility because it looks like Edgar's looking into everything and Frank's kind of assisting him with that. I didn't gain anything over here, did I? No. And I only have the one encrypted message still. No, I have two. Okay. Okay. It's each beacon point. Okay, each beacon point. Got it. Very interesting. I'm not gaining any more insight from this area, I don't think. Oh, there's Moon Man, Dawn of the Colony. Exhausted but determined, the astronaut follows an old friend's trail. On his search across the moon, continues in a remote outpost. He discovers evidence of a dubious plot with far-reaching consequences. I should use the read feature more often, because it can be hard to read these sometimes. 
I'm still convinced that's about me, though. Also, with the 1881 work for the computer up top, too? Is that like the... Is that the password for everything? Let's just try it. Maybe it's the universal password. It is! Monorail station offline. Unlock maintenance? Wow, okay. There was like a whole... I could just use that password for everything. And these look like used up helium cans. Stockpile of helium-3. Powerful and abundantly present on the moon, helium-3 was considered to be the key to solving humanity's energy crisis, as it both harvested and processed on Tumba facility grounds. Moving this resource away from the Tumba reactor is rarely allowed by Lunar Council. So why did they? Oh, I wish Edgar was quicker at exposing this, like, fraud of a human. Oh, this looks a little, a little interesting on the background there. Do they all look like that? Like behind the suits? Two of them do. This one's really small in comparison, but I guess different space suits probably need to be different sizes. Evacuation crew to MacArthur. Helium package and Copernicus outpost one personnel have arrived in Moon Hub, sir. Evac crew two is still nowhere in sight though. We've been trying to reach them, but we're getting no response at all. How should we proceed? Seal the door and make your way to Muna. The shield needs to be in place before we arrive with the Tomba evacuees. Sir, the other crew won't make it in time if I do that. They'll miss the launch. They know what they signed up for. Seal the door now. Yes, sir. What an actual jack wagon. Are you kidding me? I'm sorry, I have to read about that one. Oh! This is why I should have watched it in... This is why I should have watched it in, um... Evacuation in this mode. Because it gave me hints. So yeah, it gave me hints. Okay. Um... And I want to read that situation, though. Because... I don't think anyone signed up for what this man's doing. When MacArthur's second task force seems to have vanished into thin air, MacArthur gives the first task force new instructions. See off the outpost to prevent anyone from reaching the Tumba MPT reactor facility, and return to Moon Hub to further assist with outward prep. Recorded 22 September 2054, three hours. Oh! This isn't, uh, the evacuees or just people that live on the moon. These are his special task forces. So in that regard, they did actually sign up for this. It's just he's ruthless to even his own people. I see. And can I go through here? Let's turn the flashlight on. Um, oh, this is a puzzle. This is a puzzle. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, okay. And this is the... This is the sealed door? Hold up, I kind of want to look around a bit. It looks like the monorail would be on this level. Can I go up? The monorail would be on this level, but I'm not seeing the like railings. The railings are way out there. Oh no, there it is. Okay. So it's actually the level below me and I would go further out this way. So we're trying to open this door. Okay. And then this has something to do with that. But what exactly? One, two, three, four, and they're all red. Or no, that would be I would be terribly colorblind if I was like, all of these are red. No, one and two are red, three is either green or yellow, and four is purple or blue. So, what happens if I change this? Okay, and what happens if I change this? Am I trying to get them all the same color, or does it matter which color? Like, should it all be this yellowish color, or should it all be this bluish color? Okay, so this one puts blue there, red there, yellow at the end. So I should just hit this one. I should be fine, right? Oh, am I dumb? 
Let's bring that back. Oh no, I think I'm dumb. Okay, that's where we want it. I thought, I thought this is the one. It shows the wires. Oh, is it this wire? I thought it was the second one that goes to that. And then four comes from here. Oh no, come on. It should be the next one. Does it not work that way? Because this is also connected to four? Ooh, I have to think. I think this will change it to all yellow. If I do it one more time. Okay, it does. But all yellow isn't even the color I needed. I probably need it all blue. Shoot. I've been sitting here for so long and I thought I had finally figured it out. Okay, so if I need all blue, shoot. Um, I don't even know. This is connected here, but it also connects to one. Oh, well that should be easy then. I should be able to just to move this over to blue and then move these over to blue. Did this work? So you have to get it to all yellow in order to move it to all blue? Jeez, I do not want to talk about how long I did that for. I think that's everything. I think I can just go back. Because it's saved. Which makes me think that was completed. Yeah, I can I can use the monorail to leave now. Okay. My goodness, using brain power. Sometimes you have it, sometimes you don't. You know what I mean? So now we can actually head forward more. my god what is this this looks really cool tombow track access denied communication with closest base operator offline consult operator on arrival in Rhinor crater base is that your voice bobby or is that the computer system because your eyes were kind of like moving in correlation to it switch tracks why did that sneak up on me? They told me with way more time than I needed. Oh, I gotta, I gotta pay attention. So left? No, no, right. Well, that's it for me. Did I interact in time? I don't think I did. Listen, if the computer already knows what to do, why doesn't the computer just do it? Okay, so we're gonna go left, right, brakes. Tombow truck access. Jeez. Communication with closest base operator. That scared me. And that's a very long cut sequence, so I hope I don't mess it up again. Combo track locked. Switch tracks to avert fatal collision. Pressing successful. Bobby is dancing to the left of us. Just absolutely vibing this like terrible event. Look at them, they're so funny. I'm just spamming X. I'm spamming it now. I got it that time. 
Now we're gonna have the cut sequence where we actually break. Holy crap. This episode's been wild. No oxygen. It's getting even wilder. This whole facility has no oxygen because it has no helium. Oh. That makes sense. To escape the base, power the airlock to reach the control center. Interesting. That was such a smooth laser cut. And then I can't cut the other side for some reason. Well, I'm glad we did one side really smooth because that that second side was, was pretty bad. Pretty bad if I could say so myself. Holy goodness. Let's go ahead and grab some air if we can. Is this open? Hello? Oxygen? There it is. Oh, I actually get to see how you use oxygen. I don't know if I liked it or not. I couldn't really tell from that angle. There we go. Is this okay to fall in? There's no gravity, so I guess. Is this battery just dead? Oh, these batteries have helium-3 in them. So there are- there is like a decent amount of resources. Like, because everything was just left, there's still the ability to... Can I power this? I don't know what that powers. Did I just close the door on myself? Am I stupid? Hold up. So there's a decent amount of helium-3 left. Meaning that one person could theoretically live out their time here. However... Whoops. I like this. However, you'd probably have to do the thing where you... Where, like, you go out and you mine your own helium-3 every now and then. Like, I don't think there's, like, an infinite amount. Like, for a, a human natural life, it'd probably take... They'd have to learn how to mine their own helium-3 at this point. Oh, what is this? Cool. I can't read that now because... Air is something I don't have... I don't have the luxury of unless I'm just not hitting the buttons right. I feel like we powered it up. Oh, shoot. Okay. Um, I gotta go through there. I don't know if there's like a, a computer to power the... I don't know. I think I have to go this way. But I can't press the button if I do that. So if I use the ASE unit, I don't... I don't press the button. There's not like a crouch is there. There's never been a crouch in this game, and I can't barrel through that. Could I potentially... Oh. Oh, okay, I think I need to turn it off. For a bit. Yeah, I needed to turn it off for a second. Let me get this air. That way I can go through here. But then I need to turn it back on. Are you in here? Are you going to be able to find your way back to me, uh, Bobby? That's important to me. Ah! I locked him out. Oh, shoot. Bobby. Bobby, how did you do that? Like, is there a vent shaft you went? There is. You went through a whole vent shaft here. This doesn't take me anywhere special. This takes me back, I would think. I was going to say, how did you magically do that? Yeah, you did go through this vent shaft. Good for you, Bobby. Good for you. Well, cool. I think I'm going to end the episode here on this, this revelation of a, a vent shaft. So next episode, we will... 
So next ep so next episode we'll be escaping this area. That'll be fun. I feel like we're getting really close to the actual secret. Like even here, look at this. Like look at their little heads. They are not party rocking. This will be great. So I'll see y'all next time. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure to give it a like. And if you like to hang around on our adventure, feel free to subscribe. Besides that, peace.